Thank you, Ray. Uh, gorgeous and generous introduction. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to make a few comments and then hand it over to uh, to Arvin for what um, we're just, just going to be an extraordinary time with people. This part of the overall roundtable workshop may feel like the others, but it's actually sharply different in some ways. Those on this panel are actually in their day jobs, agents of community power who navigate the fraught waters of power in their community setting that are marked by dramatic inequity that fall along very predictable lines of race, ethnicity, language, and legal status. These are, of course, can be identified as community-initiated programs, sort of like the title of the overall workshop. But these are actually demonstrations of community power, what in my religious tradition, we would say in Greek as dunamis. Even within the National Academies, however, it has not been entirely welcome to speak of this process, this phenomenon as power. It's much easier to focus on community initiation as creating a venue for programs, offering best practices defined by academic evaluation. Power is a much more multi-relevant phenomenon. Some of us involved in this process are students of leading causes of life, a very different framework for talking about the phenomenon of community. And that the heart of that process has led us to focus on agency, which is visible in every single human and every human community. The universality of this energy, which some call spirit, is what makes us moral as individuals and as communities and what makes us capable and accountable for our choices. Humans have agency, neighborhoods do, institutions and political bodies do. What you'll hear on this panel are masters of the craft of facilitating, nurturing, provoking, evoking, aligning that universal energy. It's not something that gets injected into a community, but brought up out of it. And in some ways, in some ways, it's the process of getting institutions of privilege to get the knee off the neck of community. I mentioned that yesterday I was on a webinar with public health and a major coalition and a healthcare system in St. Paul, Minnesota. It was supposed to be about vaccination and how 60 community organizations, mostly linked to faith, could lend their energy to this necessary effort. Only afterward, I happened to ask the organizer out of curiosity, how far her office was from the site of George Floyd's murder. Turned out it was 10 blocks away. Oh. Her clinic was burned and all 60 organizations had been drawn deeply into the power dynamics of rage and resistance. The fact is if they had not been present in the rage and resistance, they would simply not have had credibility relevant to community vaccination. But that huge qualification for public health relevance never quite came up on the webinar. We didn't really talk about power. We don't want to make that mistake this morning. We want these agents of community power to invite us more deeply and transparently into the actual labor and art of manifesting the fruits of community power. It's not an entirely easy or safe story for anybody. It's not safe to tell it. It's not entirely safe to hear it. Arvin is gonna help us as he's been very thoughtful in designing a way that might help this story come into our lives and maybe even touch us with power too. Well, thank you, Gary. Uh, I join you from El Paso, Texas. Uh, behind me, you see an image of the University of uh, Texas at El Paso. Uh, Gary's been here a few times. Uh, what you see behind these beautiful Bhutanese monastery-like buildings and how they came to be in West Texas, that's another story. Uh, what you see behind the buildings is the city of uh, Ciudad Juarez. We are right on the border. This is the reason why I moved here. You don't know if the border crosses you or you cross the border. It's an absolutely magical place, uh, a, a bilingual, bicultural, binational 
environment. Uh, 25,000 of our students, 70% uh, of them first generation. Uh, this is a place where agency uh, is in action. 2,500 of our students uh, before COVID hit used to cross the border. Now, the University of Texas campus is not very far away. And thank you, Gary, for evoking uh, or invoking uh, George Floyd it is not very far away from the site of the Walmart where in August 2019, uh, we had uh, a shooting uh, that killed 22 people and uh, wounded uh, 26 others. And of course, El Paso was in the national news as a community at that time. We've also been in the national news because of our refrigerated trucks uh, and morgues and a community which uh, has multi-generation homes, uh, uh, health inequities, uh, you know, uh, becomes a tinderbox in some ways uh, for uh, uh, the ravaging uh, COVID epidemic. But I have to tell you, inspired by Gary that a few days ago, I was back at the UTEP campus. I rolled up my sleeves because I was getting a vaccination. Interestingly, the vaccinations were organized by our School of Pharmacy. It was a sort of a teaching learning project. The person who vaccinated me, I asked her, she said she crossed the border, leaving her home at 6.30 in the morning. She had an apprentice, so she was teaching while she was administering uh, that magical Pfizer dose to me. And behind her was her teacher. So this is agency in action, power in action, spirit in action. And hopefully the picture behind me uh, tells the story of the city of El Paso. Uh, a little more holistically uh, than uh, for what we've been known in the national news. So uh, thank you, Gary, for getting us started. As he said, we have uh, five individuals on this call who are masters of their craft in terms of taking the energy and bringing out the energy in the communities that they reside. And they, in our first round, uh, will uh, share uh, with us in about 180 seconds. We didn't say three minutes because we want, uh, we know they will make each second count. And we've invited them as they do their uh, round of transformative storytelling uh, to take a picture uh, or bring a picture, one picture, which tells the story of the work that they do in some ways, much like the picture that I have uh, behind me. So our, if, if our, if our uh, colleagues are ready uh, and we will introduce each of them as we go, we begin with Rashida, Rashida Ferdinand, and Rashida uh, comes to us from uh, Sankofa and organization that she will talk about. Rashida, 